Hi and welcome to BetSafe. My name is Thomas Enquist and today we are looking into the last Grand Slam of the year, the US Open in New York City. Welcome. Yes, very welcome. And as you can see, uh, behind me you don't see the, the roll-up from BetSafe because it was some problem with it, so it rolled up the wrong way. And nothing bad without something good. Now you will see a lot more uh, uh, on Thomas Inquist instead of me. And US Open, it's the fourth and the last Grand Slam tournament of the year. And every Grand Slam tournament has its, its own trademark. In Australian Open, we have the kindness and the calmness. In Wimbledon, we have the, the traditions. In French Open, we have Yes, what do we have? We have the clay. <laughs> Otherwise, I, I have. it's hard for me to put the finger on what's special with French Open. And then we have US Open. What's so special with, that, with US Open, Thomas? Uh, the US Open is a, is a fantastic event with uh, very involved fans. The New York crowd, it's very loud. They love to share. They love the underdogs. Of course, they love the American players as well. But they are really loud. They're sharing... Uh, very loudly and it's a lot of movement all around the, 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 the arena and on the courts and uh, uh, some players in the past have been struggling with it uh, because maybe it's not as quiet and still as a regular tennis tournament but I mean in the last decade or so tennis has changed you know now these days you don't need to be that quiet when you are looking at the tennis match and also the young generation that are coming up now are so used to this so uh, you don't see too many of the complaints anymore the players thinking that it's too loud around the court but it's, it's a fantastic uh, event and, and, uh, and it's uh, two weeks of, of, of great tennis to look forward to here Absolutely, and Stefan Edberg is one of the players that you uh, that had problems during the first years in in Flushing Meadows in New York because it was so so noisy for him, and he, di he didn't like to play in the floodlights during the night matches. Uh, what about you, Thomas? Yeah, I think that uh, of course you have like the airplanes just yes, passing just yes, over the, the the center court, and uh, and uh, it's uh, like I say, it's a lot of movements around the around the, uh, the arena. Uh, it's true that in the in the in the eighties, maybe in the beginning of the nineties, that the lights were maybe some players thought that the lights were a little bit difficult. But but all this with a new stadium that built uh, a while ago back now. I mean, the lights is unbelievable good, and the atmosphere on the Arthur Ashe Stadium, eighteen thousand screaming fans on the night matches. I mean. It's probably the best feeling like you can have as a player to play there. So uh, I think uh, if, I cannot speak for all the players, of course, but uh, if, I, if I would say something, I think this is one of the favorite courts for most of the players. To so play a night match in US Open is uh, it's a lot of fun. Did you play a night match when you first played against Agassi in '93? Yes, that was a night match, and it's, uh, of course a memory for life. Uh, the atmosphere around the court and everything was just uh, electrifying. And it was your first grand. It was not your first Grand Slam tournament. I think it was your fourth or fifth. But it was your first U.S. Open, and you played Agassi, and you won. What do you remember from that match and from that tournament where you, where you advanced to round 16 and lost to Sampras, who later won the tournament? What do you remember most? Yeah, of course, great memories for me. And uh, what sticks out is obviously the match against Agassi, where I had two sets of love. He came back to two sets also in the fifth set there. The crowd was on their toes the whole time, of course, supporting Agassi uh, to, 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 to make it uh, to, to make the comeback, f uh, fulfill the comeback. But uh, I uh, somehow found a way to win that match. And it's uh, one of the strongest memories I have in my career. And it's a, it's a fantastic memory. And two other times, 96 and 2000, you were also in the round of 16. Did you think that you could have done some year even better than you did? did you, you lost to Musta once and you would once, if I remember right? Yeah, I mean, in a way, yes. Uh, I mean, obviously, you are not better than the results, but uh, in, in a way that I usually played really well during the summer season in the States, and I have quite a few of titles uh, on the hard court. And, um, uh, of course, that I, I is not happy with only reaching the, the the round of 16 of US Open because I think that was my maybe my best chance to win a tour, win a Grand Slam tournament should have been the US Open. So um, tough to say why it happened, but uh, it's uh, of course a little bit disappointing looking back to it because I loved that event, I loved the US hardcore season, and uh, I won quite a bit of tournament leading up to the US Open. So mm. um, yeah, uh, a little bit disappointment that I didn't do better in the US Open. In the Grand Slam tournament this year, we saw Roger Federer 
uh, took to the title in Australian Open in Wimbledon. Rafael Nadal took the title in French Open. And when we, it comes to Grand Slam tournament, we usually talk about the big four and their dominance. But <laughs> I have a different feeling this time, Thomas, because Djokovic is not playing. Federer... I, he uh, had back problems. Mari has a hip problem. And the other young guys, Sverev and Kyrgios, is playing really well at the moment. What's your feeling? Yeah, I can um, agree with that. Uh, I still, though, have both uh, Nadal and Federer uh, coming into US Open this year as big favorites. Uh, Federer has won two Grand Slams and Nadal won so far this year and they also have been the players who has played the most consistently and kind of dominating the year so far. Uh, having said that, of course, like you say, that the big win for Alexander Zverev who took his second Masters Towson event. First he won Rome uh, at the spring on the clay and now when he, he won uh, uh, Montreal uh, Masters Series Thousand event as well on the hard court. So obviously he is playing really well and uh, he is ready physically and playing wise he's ready to take his first Grand Slam. And then Dimitro who took his first um, uh, th Masters Thousand Series event in Cincinnati. Dimitro is a player we always mention and we think he has an unbelievable level of play uh, but never really make it through a big tournament like that. So I think this is a big breakthrough for him to show himself that he actually can go all the way and win a big tournament like this. But uh, again, uh, if we speak about uh, favorites, we still have to say that Nadal and Federer coming into this US Open as big, two big favorites. And if we compare with last year's tournament, we missed the title defender Stan Wawrinka, we miss uh, the finalist Djokovic, and, uh, and we miss uh, the semi-finalist Ki, Ki Nishikori. He's out for the rest of the season because of a wrist injury. And the only sem semi-finalist from last year playing this year is Gael Monfils. And that makes me even more con uh, convinced that it's more open than maybe not than ever but in a long time and also Marin Silic is back on the court yeah absolutely it's a, it's 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 a nice to see that both Murray and Silic is playing the US Open but uh, a lot of injuries uh, on the top players, uh, Wawrinka, who has played so well in the past in the US Open, unfortunately he will not play. Nishikori is another great hardcore player who has played fantastic in the US Open. He's not playing as well. Djokovic, of course, uh, maybe one of the best hardcore players ever, is not playing. So, in that sense, I agree with you that it's uh, it's, it's more open than 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 ever in the way. But uh, still, I would say that if you look at the, what the, how the Grand Slams has been played this year, and if you look at the full season, we have two players in Nadal and Federer who are dominating. And when it comes to the Grand Slams, I still have them as as quite uh, before quite a big space between between them and the rest of the field. How much do you think that Dimitro's title means for him? I mean, it means a lot for him, but for his self-confidence and for the rest of the year? I think it means a lot because it's a big title. The Masters Series 1000 is uh, as difficult as win to, to win the Grand Slam because all the players are playing there. And uh, Dimitro always knew that his game was big and he can beat any player in the world, but he hasn't been able to bring the tennis together and win big titles because he always here and there he stumbles on the, on the, on the match and he even if you beat a good play the next round might be difficult and and he hasn't been consistent enough but so this i think was a big breakthrough for him to show himself that he actually can go all the way and win the big title so i think that uh, not only for the us open but for the rest of his career that was a very important event a very important win for for dimitro uh, and Thomas, before we hear your picks for the favorites, uh, let's have a look at the draw. What do you say? Yeah, interesting draw. Uh, you're having Nadal, who's number one in the world, of course, top seeded with Murray on the other side. It's actually Federer ending up on the same half as Nadal. So in case they will both reach the semifinal, that's where Federer and Nadal is going to meet. You have uh, uh, Sverev that I believe can have a very successful Grand Slam. He goes to play Silic eventually in the quarterfinal. Uh, as always, a couple of very hot first rounds. Uh, Federer actually has a pretty difficult first round when he played the young American Tifu in the in the in the first round, uh, and um, you know as always uh, the top players looking forward to pass the first week, try to find the rhythm. It's always more difficult to stop the top players when they have find the rhythm and they have passed the first week. So it's going to be very interesting to follow. Then over to the women's tournament, where eight players has the 
chance to be world number one after US Open. <laughs> and it shows how tough it is in the top of the women's tennis, Thomas. Uh, yes, it's a, it's a very open, um, and I mean Halep. He has she has now had three chances during this season to become the first Romanian girl to become the number one player in the world, uh, and uh, obviously sad for her. She has missed all three occasions, but very open uh, women's game where you have a lot of uh, players playing well at the moment. But um, uh, it's going to be interesting to follow and see how Halep now uh, react again after have blown that chance uh, in the in the Cincinnati final against Mudgruza. And what do you think, uh, Thomas, about Halep? Because three chances, as, as you said, uh, in three different matches and in French Open, we saw her loss, lose her grip against uh, Jelena Ostapenko in the final, and she took only one game in the Cincinnati fin final against Muguruza. Is it nerves? Do you think? I think so. I think that uh, that uh, in Roland Garros definitely it was uh, was nerves. I mean, she was very big favorite coming into that match. She had the match in her hand and it slipped out of her hands somehow. And of course, first to win the Roland Garros for the first time, but also to become the number one player in the world. Big occasion for her. So there you could see that she really tightened up in the end of that match. I think in Wimbledon, I think she played an unbelievable match against Conta. It's one of the best women's matches I've seen this year. So I would not say that that was nerves. I think she actually performed really, really well. But again, now I think in Cincinnati, of course, uh, collapsing a little bit, only getting one game, even if Mogruza played really well. Um, I mean, that's not going to happen. So, uh, of course, now when this, she had like three chances, of course, it's in her head. You know, she's been so close now to get that number one uh, spot on the ranking and she's been putting herself in the position to take it and she has tightened up a little bit in that situation so it would be would be a, a tough the US Open for Halep and especially when the draw come out and we saw the popcorn first round she actually played Maria Sharapova in the first round I mean what the first round for both Maria and, and for Halep uh, and we're really looking forward to watch that one of course Absolutely. And then we have word number three, Garbine Muguruza, who has never uh, survived the second round in US Open. And before this year, she didn't have a very strong hard court uh, record. She was in the Cincinnati semi final last year. But still, Thomas, before Toronto and before Cincinnati, you had her as one of the big favorites. And then she was in the quarterfinals in Toronto and she won in Cincinnati. So you were right there, very right. Yeah, I think so. I think first of all, she has a very good game for the hard court. So there's nothing, there's no reason why she shouldn't do well on the hard court. And second of all, I thought that after women that Wimbledon title, uh, I mean, I just felt like I mean her confidence level obviously raised to the roof there. And she's uh, so demanding on confident. When she's confident and she's hitting through her shots and she goes for her shot, she's a very difficult player to beat. And she's been struggling a little bit with her confidence, especially after winning that uh, Roland Garros title uh, last year. She could a little bit difficulty to handle that new situation, uh, a lot of pressure on her, and she played uptight a little bit for for quite some time. But then. You know, she took that Wimbledon title and suddenly all the weight on the shoulders disappeared. And now she's just playing the tennis that she can do and she's swinging freely. And I mean, what a tennis she played in that final against mm. Halep in Cincinnati. Unbelievable good. And then, Thomas, it's time. Who will win the last Grand Slam tournament of the year? Um, I think that uh, that uh, on the men's side, I would say that Nadal and Federer are the two very big favorites coming in, even if Zverev and Dimitrov won Montreal and Cincinnati. But I will still hold, held, hold them as big favorites, Nadal and Federer, because of the consistency they have played through this year. They have won the three first three Grand Slams of the year, two for Federer, one for Nadal, and they are the two best players in the world at the moment. Uh, Biggest challenger for Nadal and Federer is obviously Zverev, who has won two Masters 1000 event this year. Young player, fearless, he knows he can do it. He's just getting better and better for each week. Uh, Dimitri obviously now full of confidence after, after his Cincinnati win. Uh, and then we'll see, you know, Andy Murray, what kind of, uh, you know, if he can pass the first week, if his hip feel fine and he can, you know, play pretty uh, pressure free. Nobody really is going to expect uh, Andy Murray to do unbelievable well because he's been out for injury. So maybe he can come in and really enjoy playing again and, and feel free and, f and, and play without pressure. So if he can pass the first week, I think Andy can do well as well. And on the women's side? 
on the women's side, I would say that Halep for sure. Uh, he has she has been playing unbelievable throughout the year. Uh, she's going deep into the tournaments uh, almost every week. Mugrutsa, of course, uh, after women, winning Wimbledon, she's playing very well, high confidence. So the two women I would mention first is Halep and Mugrutsa. Challenges for them, I would say it's uh, uh, Svitolina who has played well, is Pliskova always has a big game, and then we cannot forget the Vosniaki who always plays mm. uh, very well at the US Open and always difficult to beat. And if you has to name only two players, one on the men's side and one on the women's side? Oh, difficult, but I would say uh, Nadal and Halep. Thank you for watching and enjoy US Open and Thomas Enquist and I will be back to the Master Tournament in Shanghai in October. Thank you. Bye bye. Yes, thank you very much for watching and listening to us and we will see you soon back again. Thank you very much. Enjoy US Open.